And we're actually starting to finally see heroes come out for teams playing, uh, you know, being played by specific players because of stylistic. Something that happens in other MOBAs quite a bit. This is going to be the first time Mighty gets first ban, and they will insta-ban Kael'thas. We're going into Infernal Shrine, so definitely yeah. a map where Abathur is probably, like, second weakest, actually, than yeah. Spider Queen, so probably not actually going to be a factor here. Although Rave Hots has given it some thought, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, it is still a big map, so Abathur's global presence can be useful, and they're just so good with him, but I don't think we'll see a ban on that. I think we might see an Illidan pick for Mighty if Rave doesn't take it away, based on the fact that they do Kael'thas. Yeah, Kael is good, but he's not a first ban worthy hero. It's kind of a, what I like to call a throwaway ban when you're first pick, so you can actually get exactly what you want, one of two things. So they are going to take Illidan first, as predicted, and Abathur taken! And Greyman. Wow. So Rave is like, I am not giving you Illidan Abathur. No way in hell well, will I allow you to have that. I think they, they just absolutely had to do that. Uh, you know, the Abathur player is just so good on Team Mighty anyways. And so they don't want them to have Abathur no matter what, but to have Illidan over there already. But look at that. That opens up an easy Tassadar pickup. Oh, if yeah. they don't pick up Tassadar, I don't even know. I think the game crashed or something. We have to restart the draft. Easily Tassadar. Uh, Uther is the only other viable choice here. Obviously, um, he's going to be really strong paired with Ilden. They could even grab both. It would pigeonhole their draft mm -hmm. quite a bit. Yeah, it would. Uh, but if you if you grab Uther instead of Tassar, what you give up is some of that wave clear. So, it if they don't take Tassar, that might force a Tassar ban from Rave Hots as well, which could be a strategy that they want to go with. Uh, but you know, the thing is, Tassar is just very good on the map at clearing monsters, clearing lanes. Uh, they, they do skip it, though. Yeah, they're going to grab Li Ming, which has been a big uh, staple pick for uh, Rave Hots. So not a bad choice, taking that away from Gilduck. Now, the ban here, Tastar is a great choice still, because double support, Illidan is one of the scariest things you can ever encounter. The vision and wave clear that Tastar grants is never to be underestimated. Mm. Um, trying to think of like who else they could really grab here, because I think we're going to see Mighty Band Murden. That's pretty obvious, yeah, I'd yeah. say, at this point. Like, I would definitely say that it's going to be a Murden ban on their side. Uh, for Rave Hots, I think that it's it's pretty easy to just ban Tassar. He's just good on the map. He's good with Illidan. But they're definitely putting in a lot of thought. Like, they could try some sort of tank denial. But yeah. the thing is, if they ban a tank, a Mighty's ban looks like it's an obvious, obvious Murden ban. So you don't want to ban a tank because you're just going to ban yourself out of ETC. Exactly. Um, I feel like... Okay, Falsa, that's not a bad ban. Yeah, that, that was okay. I was looking at maybe we could even have seen like a Brightwing ban if they were considering that, but not going to happen. Now, Mighty can either ban Brightwing or Murd in here. Brightwing, yeah. one of the best pairs and counters to Illidan. <laughs> so, uh, something we see in Korea a lot. They're going to oh, take Sonya. Sonya. You know, that's, that's a good one as well, actually. She goes very well against Illidan, so not too surprised to see that, especially considering how strong she is on the shrines themselves. All right, well, now Rave Hots is going to decide how they're going to build the comp around stopping Illidan. They already took the Abathur away. They grabbed Greymane, which seems to be somewhat of a comfort pick for NMX. And well, there's not a lot of easy choices here. We talked about Brightwing already, something that we could see fit into the draft for the Polymorphs. Um, she's got a bit of global, global presence, but she does not have burst heal. Yes, that is very, very true. Uh, I think that a Muradin pickup seems really smart here reverberation plus stuns but no they actually do grab etc i thought for sure they'd be going for a muradin now etc is good against illidan don't get me wrong but feels like muradin just has a few more tools against him for sure i wonder what support we're gonna see here because honestly uh moonburn malfurion is not bad on this map he could also root illidan which prevents him from doing a lot of his damage you can secure kills with that especially with the etc power slide I think Taronda is not a bad choice either, but you're kind of limiting yourself in healing if you grab Taronda here. Rhaegar is going to be the choice. All right, Rhaegar, of course, always one of these top pick healers as well. So uh, it definitely helps out with his lightning shield on those shrines also. All right, well, Mighty, tasks are still available. Uh, definitely, yeah. a, I think, a, a choice that's not like an, an absolute must, but definitely something I, I would like to see here, just because it basically yeah. reinforces Illidan with Leeching Plasma. He's his his way clear. I mean, everything about Tassadar is, is a great pick. The Muradin, of course, they need one of those frontlining tanks. And the only other choice I would really like is Zul. You're going to get insanity yeah. wave clear from this. Like, 
he's going to be able to just have two lanes pushed all the time, every time. And the wave clear on the side of Ray Potts is basically Grey Mane and Lightning Shield. Yeah, it <laughs> I is. I want to call Rhaegar a hero well, here. <laughs> they're they're going to have to pick up something else over there for that. Uh, kind of interested in what that final pick will be for Ray Potts. Could be like a Zera tool or something. Yeah, it could be Zul also, you know, yeah. to lock down Illidan if it's available. That's true. I mean, if you have enough stuns and enough slows, Uther can't cleanse them all. A lot of thought, actually, but for both teams here. Mighty really trying to I think they're trying to decide between Tastar and Zul. 45 seconds to go here. Ray Potts only has 18 bonus pool as well. Like This has been a really complex draft, mm -hmm. what we're seeing here. Yeah, a lot of back and forth so far. Notice the cameras on Jocker here mostly. Um, because he's going to be the Murden, so it's like, what can we pair this with? Mm. If you grab Azul, like, can I Stormbolt him after he gets, you know, boy, or Bone Prisoned? Like, that kind of discussion definitely going on for sure. All right, 15 uh, seconds to go on, here. Guys. I mean, Almost no time left here. They definitely you know, have two options at least in mind. They're just trying to narrow it down. Like, Jocker's got to pull rock, paper, scissors out in a minute if they really can't decide this one. Five <laughs> seconds to go. Three. Zool. Okay, there's the Zul. So that means Raybots needs a different type of wave clear. Uh, I almost feel like Jaina is, like, yeah, not a bad pick here. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, I mean, the slows of Jaina on Illidan are always very, very welcome, and she definitely can clear lanes as quickly as anyone else. I mean, Kael'thas is already out of here, so. Blizzard paired with ETC's Mosh Pit. I like the Jaina pick a lot. Can also yeah. be cloned, synergizes with Abathur. Um, Zagara is still available. I mean, this is such a complex draft. Yeah, this last pick, it, there's a lot of stuff it could be. Their only range right now is Greymane, so that's a little bit scary. If they take something like a, a Zeratul or whatnot, it would be uh, very aggressive, but they take Sylvanas at the end of the day, and of course, her wave clear is fantastic. Yeah, second only to Zul's, really, and she has the best push power. So if you win a fight, you know she's gonna get. You're gonna get a tower with her at least. Sometimes yeah. even a full wall. And the web weaver strength with her is just out of this world. So uh, a bit of uh, Chinese flavor coming into this one. It's really kind of been getting bigger and bigger in Korea, especially of course as Sylvanas has been reworked a little bit in the recent patches and uh, has become a very strong hero, but. Uh, definitely that Chinese influence showing up, and she is the hero that on this map, you have a Punisher and you have Sylvanas up in that lane, the Punisher is going to be a lot harder to kill. Yeah, I said Web Rivers earlier, but I meant Punisher. <laughs> we knew. We, it's okay. The Grave Golems, man, they're really tough yeah, to kill. <laughs> absolutely. I had to correct myself there. All right, guys, can Rave Hots bring it back? Or is Mighty the underdogs and this going to take a 3-0? Let's jump into Infernal Shrines to find out. All right, for Mighty Pong, again on the melee assassin, Ilden, Dudu on Leeming this time, Kong is playing Zul, Dong is on Uther, and Jocker once more on Murden. Gonna be really cool to watch this composition in action here. Love the Zul pickup, as you were saying, Wolf. Over in the right, on, in the right, on the red. No, the other way around. Hidden on ETC, Hamlin on Abathur, Jfeel on Rhaegar, NMX on Greymane, and Gilduck on Sylvanas. Kind of interesting that we have Hamlin on uh, Abathur here as opposed to Gilduck, who has definitely used a lot of Abathur before. Yeah, that's true. It's kind of funny that um, this team has two flex players, uh, as both sides of this is the case, and it's very rare in uh, competitive Heroes of Storm to have a team with two flexes. Mm. And it does give you a lot of strength, but it also can be a bit of a weakness. Um, big push here with Sylvanas. Yeah, that, that was great to kill one tower completely, and they do get out of here. Don't forget, Abathur is down uh, in the middle lane. Zul there as well, so both teams getting about the same amount of soak, but I love moves like that. If you pick Sylvanas, just choose top or bottom lane and kill a tower, because you will get it unless they are all there. Yep. I mean, if they're all there, your uh, your fifth hero is going to be getting extra soak. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> so... It's just like sick Stormbolt Joker. <laughs> A slight lead in the XP here for Rave Hots. Couldn't hit the ground with that Stormbolt. Well, like, wow. <laughs> um, 
calling Tutu the hero, saying he's fun, basically, is the idea there. I can't quite directly translate that into English, but a Tutu fan <laughs> there in the audience. Hey, he's a fantastic player. Look at the pressure Sylvanas puts on here. Yeah. And, Solo uh, pressure by yourself. Yeah, some nice damage going down onto those towers. Uh, definitely a super useful hero for some of these split pushing maneuvers. But Zul can outpush her in lane. Like, uh, of course she can, you know, deal a lot of damage to these minions and stop them from attacking. But the zombies are on top of that. I think the the big difference between the two specialists here is that Zul will push after he leaves the lane, whereas mm. Sylvanas has to be there because yeah. the skeletons are going to push and take ammo, whereas. She's going to stop the cannons from firing, but she has to physically be there. She can't drop her uh, trait onto some towers and then go mm. drop it on the, the second lane's towers as well. If Sylvanas kills a tower, it has full ammo when it dies. Okay? Yeah. It's very, very different from when Zul does it. All right, it looks like our first shrine is up here in the top. Already Mighty taking a little bit of an advantage there. Zul and Sylvanas both staying in the bottom. Yeah. Well, Zul's coming up, and actually we have a little rotation down to this middle lane from Rave Hots. Everything talent-wise looking pretty normal here, just taking a look at everything. Protective shield coming out for Uther, as you'd expect. And these pushes continue to be I very love powerful, this. you know? I, I love this, Wolf. This makes so much sense that they're doing this. What does the first Punisher get? The wall. If they come down here and kill a wall, they, they've they already gotten the Punisher, haven't they? Yeah. The Punisher, they already want it. And also the EXP of the wall is going to be more significant uh, than the skeleton, the monster EXP that you get. I mean, you do get some EXP from the monsters on the uh, actual altars themselves, but you don't get as much as getting the wall and getting that whole minion wave. So, yeah, I mean, it was a nice move, and Pong does, uh, you know, with that actually do quite a bit um, solo, and the rest of the team was split. But you see things kind of even out here because the wall will yep. be taken for Mighty. And they just decided that with their composition, they wanted to stick with what their strengths lie in, which is their pushing rather than um, yeah. the, the shrine itself. Because, I mean, I'll hold that thought. As Zhang may go down here. Ooh, and there he goes. Nice pick off right there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the amount of damage done by their split push was the same as what the Punisher ended up doing. So good moves here by Raven. I especially like it because their composition early on is going to be extra weak in these team fights. Abathur plus Sylvanas early don't really help much in team fights. So just great decision making here. They're really picking it up this game. Now with Abathur here helping Gilduck out, especially with Hidden rotating down, they are gonna win this fight. Now I love this because there's no vision of what's going on up here with Jfield and NMX. So probably Mighty is under the impression that's a big rotation down to the bot perks. And as soon as that light goes off on the minimap, they're gonna be like, oh, we've been duped here to a certain extent. Um, Gilduck will escape their excellent uh, use of his E there to get out. And they don't commit to those bot mercs, but I really liked what he showed there because it made Mighty probably feel like, ah, yeah, they're just relaxing down there. I'm not even going to commit. You know, I really like how this game is going so far. There's no, like, big engagements between the two teams, but everyone's split pushing. Everyone's trying to pick off towers whenever they can. It's like a war of a thousand paper cuts on both sides. Yeah, it's, it's almost like we're watching the early game of a chess match or something. It's all strategic, what we're mm -hmm. seeing. It's not about micro or mechanics so much. Um, it's just very much a vision game and a threatened game. Mm -hmm. All right, Gilduck really pushing this hard. This time they will actually co commit to the Mercs because they have the mid push coming as well with the uh, easy camp. Ooh, and Mighty kind of waiting there, party bushing for a moment, but they are going to go ahead and rotate down towards this Merc camp. Rave does cap it before they get there, though. That was really scary, actually, with Hidden here. If they had committed, they could have re-engaged. And look at this, because they have Sylvanas' pushing power, they're going to actually support these goat men. And this is a lot of damage being done, and Pong way overextending here. He's actually going to continue to commit. Yeah, still actually has pretty high health there. Some great healing coming out of Jong and making sure that he stays alive there, even with the cleanse. And they will be able to clean up the goat men, but the goat men did get a tower. All right, now the shrine is active, but has not been activated as Kong is actually pushing the mid lane right now, trying to set up for that. Looks like the Shrine is basically being ignored because Mighty knows that the push power here for Rave Hots is just too intense to let go. And ooh, ooh, let's not forget, 10 is about to be reached by both teams. Looks like Rave should have it just slightly before. So this is a very scary, like, few seconds coming up. Yeah, Zul up at the top might actually grab it just first, even forcing um, Hamlin to back off there in the top lane. All right, it's just barely before here for Hots. As you said, Rave Hots will get that first. And uh, 
everything is yeah, no. what you'd expect. The wailing arrow <laughs> coming out, not uh, going to see We just never control. see possession, man. But look Whoa! at this. Oh! Awesome pickoff here. Absolutely love it from Rave. And, of course, we do have Mighty rotating up here. But some very good healing and cleansing coming out of Jay Field. And they didn't even use the clone when this started. And now that the clone is up, Hamlin's going to jump in. Divine Shield does go down, but it's actually just barely not enough with the Wailing Arrow coming wow. down. He will be killed. Zul's about to respawn, but I feel like that was too aggressive for Pong. Mm -hmm. That was like an Oreo Man from a 2015 move right there. Like, no, nah, we got this fight. Yeah. He didn't even use a clone yet. Dude, uh, to be honest, Pong's thrall was a little bit lacking before as well. He was jumping in a lot of times and getting blown up in a matter of seconds. So, I don't know. Maybe this is part of the issue uh, that, that could be their downfall going forward. Yeah. This series absolutely still could go either way, and I feel like we're starting to see some of the cracks, the chinks uh, missing in the armor for Mighty with this comp. Um, this shrine is controlled by them currently, but with NMX coming back up, this is going to be tough for Mighty to hold on to. Jocker up here in the front still has Dwarf Toss. Ready to jump out at any time, but they've definitely got, uh, you know, the, the positioning here right now. We do have Hidden coming around from the other end, and it looks like he is going to try to go ham here. But, oh, a huge Poison Nova goes off. Actually hitting four members here, but the clone on Ham and forcing Dudu out of the fight. NMX up in the front lines as well. There's the Metamorphosis in the middle of everything. NMX escapes, actually, and first blood goes oh, down on the Zul. Oh, that power slide by Hidden, just fantastic. Jong looks like he's going to go down as well. Beautiful play there by Hidden. That was so, so well positioned. I'm really liking Hidden's ETC. Is Johanna not so much, but his ETC is yeah. really on point. Definitely um, do agree with you there. And Mighty did get this Punisher, so it's very important that they did get that three man to actually make this worth it. Looks like they will save this healing fountain as well. <laughs> yeah, that did almost zero damage, but uh, you know that happens sometimes. You really have to push with those Punishers because otherwise they. You know, no no one in their right mind is going to just die to the Punisher, and since it attacks heroes, you're not going to get a lot of building damage done. Yeah. A lot of uh, mines down here giving vision. So right now, Raypots knows the one for these Goatmen, and Hidden's in position as always, 10 out of 10 with his ETC mm -hmm. to set up for a fight. Not going to commit. Not everybody was here. NMX was uh, taking their own camp. Looks like they are rotating down. Four of them in the bush right now, rolling in. But of course, Joker does have his dwarf toss, so it looks like he should be able to get out of here. Oh! oh! NMX goes for the finishing blow there and will kill him. Yeah, fantastic move. And even getting right out of there in a matter of seconds with that swipe, with a cleanse as well. That is the sign of a good gray main player, knowing exactly how much damage you need to yeah. go for the throat and get the kill. I actually thought he was going to get away with, like, one hit point, but it was, like, exact lethal damage there. Yeah. That was, that's some smart decision making. He really knows. He's like, no, nah, the scaling at level 13, he has 12. Yeah. Like, he's like, I got this. <laughs> of course, he does that all very quickly in his head. Probably yeah. doesn't. And he's like, no, guys, no, 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 listen, listen, listen. No. He has to drop the trigger in a matter of seconds, but great play there by NMX. So, almost a fort for a fort traded here as Zul is actually pushing both lanes right now, the Skeletons and the Impalers in the mid lane. But it's not a hard enough push, and he can't stick around, so he gets neither fort, um, whereas the bot fort goes down. So a lead in his structures here for Rave Hots. Um, as, you know, obviously both are severely damaged, and the next Punisher will um, not be pushing either of those lanes, so I still feel like this is a much better position for Rave Hots, but 13's up for Mighty. Ooh, that's very important to have that additional talent here. We have all the heroics for both sides up, so definitely this next Shrine should be a battle, I would imagine, right? Yeah. We have Lifesteal for Zul's Curse Strikes coming out, so he's going to be more up in the front lines. Um, it looks like to, you know, get a little bit more of that healing. Uh, well, I guess, you know, I thought we were going to see a battle on those shrines, but it looks like they just want to go ahead and take out a fort. Again, early on, these Punishers are not really that scary. As we saw, uh, you know, if you just trade and get, get a fort, that's going to be awesome. But Mighty doing the same down bottom. Yeah, Mighty's going to get a fort in uh, the mid lane here, and they lost their top fort, so they're still down a fort here. Um, but they're going to lose these towers as well as this uh, big tiger dude push coming up is going to keep them on the back foot. So this Punisher will not really be supported. You know, it's going to go across the lane. Um, and there's no scaling for the Punisher depending on how many skeletons your opponent has. 
So I feel like the Sylvanas push could even do more. Oh, big poison Nova coming out as the ETC slides in there. The Ancestral comes down onto NMX, but a great Mosh Pit falls. Again, a Divine Shield, though, to kind of counter that. Hidden escapes, though. And it looks like Uther will fall. Same with Lee Ming. Hamlin's just cloning and doing so much damage. Hidden gets out. I don't think Kong can actually chase. It's too risky. Too many heals. And they're going to grab a keep for this. The Punisher wow. just totally ignored. Are they going to go for it as well? Sliding in right now. Going after Joker. Joker getting very, very low. Looks like they may actually commit oh. to it. Joker goes down. This is a risky play here. They're all so low. Hidden is very low. There goes the oh, heals. Oh, man. Kong actually dealing a lot of damage to this team. They actually could end up wiping here. It's going to be close. Right now, the core going so low on Oh, my hell. God. Artosis is down to 35%, but I think they're going to defend it. Down oh. goes Tilda. It lives with 3% here. I can't even believe that. 3%. I, I mean, they're just going to get backdoored. Well, okay. This is... You know, this opens a lot of potential. Don't forget with Hamlin on Abathur, you could just clone and go for a big attack. So the top lane is always this terrifying thing that Zul's going to have to be babysitting a lot for the rest of the game. This is permanent damage. This could have actually been game winning damage for Rave, but, you know, they barely, barely survived there. This is the type of situation where if Mighty wants to win this, they have to go fight every single time. If like two heroes get by their defenses, go after the core, the core is gone. Yeah. Three percent is like may as well be one percent. It's just material. His ghost could kill this core. Yeah. So they have to go four team fights. They have to kill their opponents over and over and over. So we're gonna just see them be hyper aggressive from here on out. Exactly. They're gonna be looking to force team fights and get wipes. And they do have decent initiate, of course, uh, with Ilden to jump in and then Divine Shield go down. They also have a ton of damage with Poison Nova. Um, but they do need to be careful because of the ability for Hidden to get a multi-man Mosh, which has kind of been the story of this oh, game. Oh, a lot of damage going down onto Hidden, but the Ancestral does come off. A missed Mosh Pit goes down as well. Hamlin is so, so low with his clone, but he's putting off as much damage as he can. Divine Shield going down onto Illidan. He's doing a lot. He will kill the clone, it looks like, but not before he puts off a little bit of damage. So basically, Heroics traded here on both mm -hmm. sides. Go for the throat, still available for NMX, so he's looking for maybe a finishing kill, a follow-up blow there. And don't forget, though, every time there's a <laughs> moment where there's no vision of Rave, they all have to sit yeah. back and defend. Well, they all went back already here. They know what is going on. Rave just wants to go just kill the core in a matter of seconds. Oh, they're party pushing here. And don't forget, go for the throw, is still available. Mm -hmm. That deals a lot of damage. Oh, actually, we do have Joker. Check that out. A lot of damage going down onto Kong. He does get healed out of it, though. And another team fight does ensue. Pong is up here at the front. NMX actually has to cloak himself and get away. Pong continues to chase oh. Gildog. Gildog's going to go down here no matter what, which way you look at it. Down he goes. And this is a great opportunity here for Mighty. There's a jump forward for Joker. He does get power slid, though. And they only pick up one kill. That was a really scary moment there. Yeah. Mighty loses two people, they lose the game, period. No Absolutely. exceptions. And look, killing Gilduck was very nice, but these four heroes can still core you, so you have to be very careful about this. Look at this, I love it. Joker is actually pushing across with Jong, keeping an eye on where everyone is, stopping them from getting any camps. Great, great plays. Well, they will just absolutely annihilate this clone. Not going to be too significant. Uh, going to help them get closer to 20, I suppose, at the EXP. They're going to steal these Impalers as well, and... You know, they have to keep winning fights, but they need to be winning them better than getting one-man pickoffs mm -hmm. and killing Abathur clones. The Punisher, obviously, is starting to get a little bit more powerful as we, you know, hit 15 minutes here. But like you said, <laughs> any single kill, any move out to the core, any all-in yeah. will kill it. This is, it's a little bit crazy right now because, like, even this Punisher, they could theoretically push with it and maybe end up killing the core, but if they are all over with the Punisher, then we can just see them dive for core on the other side, and they will kill it much faster. Look what's faster. happening here. They don't have vision, and Rave is moving out. They actually have to recall right now. They have to hearth home. If they are if they don't do it, they're going to end up dying here. Oh, no. Joker gets caught, and he's actually going to be killed here, it looks like. Not going to oh. escape with the Dwarf Toss. There was the Divine Shield, though. The Divine Shield is huge. Right now, we do have J-Field getting very, very low. Pong is all over him right now, but a great silence comes out. Oh, my God. The Metamorphosis saves him. Oh, but there's the Mosh Pit going down. Hidden still alive. 
here and Raven, Whoa. good position. Everyone's so low right now. Pong might be able to finish everyone off by himself at this point. A nice heal does come out of Jong and he is going for it right now. Jay Field getting very low. A jump in here by Dudu, but the power slide does save ETC. And Jay Field is going to slow this down, but don't forget the Punisher is pushing right now. Hidden in big trouble, Dudu, for the teleport forward. Nice dodges here, but Hidden will go down. He's going to be rooted. The Punisher continuing to push that top keep. Savannah is defending Jayfield, actually nearly escaping, meanwhile. Wow, Jayfield, Jay must stand for Jukes, because he is getting out of there right now. In the meantime, Gilduck did clean up that Punisher, but this is really tough. We only have two solid bodies on the battlefield yeah. for Rave. Well, the big issue here is Uther isn't here, but they could still go for it. This is Pong we're talking about here on top of the Nexus. Yeah, Illidan definitely a Nexus killer himself. Dudu coming in as well. Dudu gets blown up here. This is their one chance. Mighty trying to win, but Pong is getting so, so low. And that is going to be game. There's a Metamorphosis trying to keep him alive. Although, as I say this, John comes up, but he dies. Oh, no. If he hadn't died there, that would have been a different story. But now Rave wins this game for sure. They just have to walk across and kill that 3% core. Yeah, that should be very, very over. easy for him. Joker here in the center. I don't know if there's anything he could possibly do against, you know, four members up on the opponent's side. I, I mean, mean he's going to try to Yeah, he's got Avatar, so he's going to live longer. He's not worried about dying, but they're just going to ignore him. He's mm -hmm. a non-threat. He's a non-issue. They're just going to go right-click that core. And, you know, there's 24 seconds before the damage dealer of Li Ming is back up. Hamlet and that's clone. just not going to be quick enough. Yeah. No way. A nice attempt here from Mighty, but Rave will take their first win in this best of five. Joker try, will try what he may, but it's not going to matter. And you know, what a great game.